Yeah, so I hope that my voice is quite clear. Uh, first of all, on behalf of my father and on behalf of the family, as well as the, uh, uh, the extended family of uh, all the people who have attended UIA, I would like to thank uh, everybody for arranging this, and I would like to thank uh, uh, the rector especially. Uh, somebody had mentioned in the beginning of this um, uh, broadcast how the Arab world, the Muslim world, usually do not honor legacy, do not honor uh, people who come in. And it takes a lot of confidence. It takes a lot of intellectual power. It takes a lot of love to actually be able to come up and say, um, that there are those before us who uh, paved the way and that we are also paving the way for others uh, behind us. It is a beautiful gesture that we truly appreciate. And it also shows how UIA is very different than everywhere else that we have been to. Um, I also would like to um, discuss a little bit about the things that everybody has talked about uh, and add a little bit more to it uh, from my own perspective of somebody who is not an intellectual, is only somebody who grew up under an intellectual tower that did not even realize it. My father saw the future. He was able to predict events down to the actual things that would be said years in advance. As a young girl, I thought he was psychic. As I grew older, I realized that my father was able, along with his wisdom, to read between the lines, to be able to predict what things mean before people understood what they could mean. And I had seen it in predicting political issues that would arise. I would see it in, 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 in meetings that would happen. And it was absolutely astounding um, how much insight and foresight he had. Sheikh Hamza Yusuf, when he first met me many, many years ago, I don't wanna say how many years ago, he said, your father is 30 to 50 years ahead of his time. It takes time for people to catch up with his thought. But what I didn't understand, and as I think many of you were able to experience, it is not just that, that there was intellectual power, that he was a tower of intellectualism in a world that was suffering, but that he was able to do things, to actually activate things. He once told me, that his life is a 60 year exploration of education. That every time he would try something, he would learn from it where it fails and then he would go on to the next step. And he said, most people were not persistent. They would give up after a few steps, but that he had aqidah. And he said, the most important thing to have is aqidah and not just Islamic aqidah, but a true belief in something that would enable you to keep on doing it for a very long time when everything else tells you to fail. And I think for him, the central question, and I'm not an intellectual, I did not understand half of my father's books. They're too difficult for me. I think the central question for him was, is Islam or can Islam be a real force of civilization, of change in the modern world? The world has said it cannot be. The world has said that UIA would have to fail, that you cannot be a real Muslim with real convictions of maqasid al-sharia, of a real understanding, and be a modern person. And we have seen this attack on Islam for a very long time. And this has been exasperated by certain areas. IIUM today has proved that it is the solution that you can become a Muslim who is modern, who understands and practices your faith and be able to move into the world and change it. That these things are not a dichotomy. They are not irrelevant. Having faith is not irrelevant. One of my father's most cited ayat was ayat al-shawb wal qaba'il. And he always said that one of two strengths in Islam, one of them, the diversity, the ability of people from all over the world to come together as brothers and sisters under the name of Allah, under Tawheed, that this is 
not something that has happened in any other religion to the extent of Islam. The diversity in Islam, it is its number one strength. The second one, the second strength you always talked about, al-adil, justice. And people have mentioned how fair he is. People have mentioned his management style. But what I'd like to say to some people, this is my point of view from a family, is yes, my father never took a vacation. Uh, I would say we were not five children, we were 10 children. Five of them were triple IT and UIA. His mentorship, his articles, his writing. Uh, a lot of people talked about how he thinks as he writes. And I have papers and papers of him editing himself. I think my father was always interested in seeing how the experiment of UIA happens. And I think he followed it uh, very carefully to see how as we step along Islamization of knowledge, if UIA can actually be at the forefront of change for the Muslim world. He was very proud of every single achievement that UIA has done whenever somebody um, actually travels and leaves UIA and starts something else somewhere else. Um, he was always mentioning how one day UIA will be the model that will be replicated all over the world. He said it might take a century, <laughs> but that people will realize that what is happening is at UIA as a continuous experiment in realizing the best of the ummah will be the example that everybody will follow. I have been privileged to have lived in Malaysia. It is my second home. I have attended only one year at UIA and it remains my greatest regret that I did not graduate from there. Thank you all for being here. It meant a lot for me personally. Um, and I appreciate it.